again, everyone. This is Paul McDermott from PMDPhotography.com. Uh, today we're going to do a tutorial on white balance with curves. There are many ways to do white balance. There's automatic, uh, there's, there's uh, levels, there's many different ways to do it, which I will cover in different tutorials. But this one specifically is going to be um, adjusting white balance with curves. Uh, this is a, a engagement shoot I did last year for Brian and Danielle. Uh, I'm going to be shooting their maternity um, uh, shoot fairly soon. Okay, uh, white balance with curves. Basically, we need to pick um, a white spot and a black spot in the image. Here's what you should be doing. Let's face it, who does that? I did it once. Here's is your black. This is a black in the image. This is a white in the image, and this is a gray in the image. And what you're supposed to, the reason why you pick these is you are going to be doing curves on an RGB. Um, curves are RGB, red, green, and blue. And these three have equal values of our red, green, and blue in them, whether it be 2, 2, 2, or, or sorry, that would be more like uh, two, um, 0, 0, 0, and 2, 5, 5, and, and 1, 27, 1, 20. Anyway, they're all equal numbers. Uh, once those numbers start getting higher, there they are. There's different colors in them. So, what do you want to? Let's actually stay on this one, and I can demonstrate an information. Uh, the this little eye drop here. If you hit I, um, let's pull up the info panel here. You'll see this info panel here. You can go to Windows and then just pull it up. You'll see an information panel, and there's an RGB value. And you take the eyedropper, and you can see the look of the numbers change as you move it around the image. We go to black here. Look at the numbers. Um, I can't drag my mouse up there without moving it in the, and the value changing. But as I hover over black, look at the RGB numbers, 25, 24, 26. Uh, they're all generally within one unit of each other. Once you start going to a color, look at red. Look at the values of red, 107 for red. 37 for green, 24 for blue, and just by common sense, there's more red in that picture, and that's what that, that value means. 107 is a higher number, therefore there's more red in there. When you're looking at black, white, and gray, those number, numbers should be equal or very, very close to it, and that's how you adjust for white balance. I don't know how many people, I mean, I have one of these cards, i got to be honest, I forget nine times, 99 times out of 100 to take a picture of it first, because... Um, it makes it a lot easier, but we're going to go with reality. Reality is is nobody's taken a shot with that with uh, their cards first, so it's easier. Forget about the gray. That's a different tutorial I'm going to go into, but we're going to concentrate on black and white. What you've got to try to find in here is two points in here, which should be white and should be black. Do not pick out blown out highlights. If there's anything in here that's blown out like a uh, completely white. Um, background of uh, blown out highlights, don't pick it because it's a skewed value of what white might be in this image. So you want to find a white, what might be white in this image. And okay, sure enough, the shoe. So let's just zoom down to the shoe. You want to pick the information thing here, the eyedropper. You can hit I, which is a shortcut. And if you hover over the white, um, you'll see there's a sample size up here. You want to pick about five by five. And what that does is, is takes a sample of five pixels wide. The higher res the image, probably the higher you should have this. Um, five is a good medium anyway. And as we hover over white, look at the values. 150 for red, 154, 154 for green, 172 for blue. So white, as I said a few minutes ago, should be all equal numbers. So just by looking at that, you can see there's too much blue in there. So I want to remember that number because I'm going to use that when I put when I pull the curves up. So if you hold the shift key down and click, you see it puts a number one point there, it remembers right here the value of that area right there. 125 red, 129 green, 147 blue. Now let's find a point on here which should be black. Um, not her jeans because there's blue in there or his jeans, but that's right up here. Looks kind of black. So again, hold down the shift key, click, and it remembers point number two. So these are the values. So it looks, we're pretty good in, in uh, the blacks there, 11, 12, and 12. 
So we've got our values. Now what do we do? We need to add a curves layer. So click curves and we pull up the curves. I'm not going to explain this whole thing because again, another whole tutorial. So what we want to do is this is an input value right here. Look at this number one. You see number one refers to this. Number two refers to this. We've got to save those points <coughs> to, to reference. And as we make changes, this second column is going to change. And we want to match these numbers so they're equal. Number one is your whites. Number two is your blacks. So blue on number one is too high. So what do we do? Go down RGB, go to blue. So now we've specifically chosen the blue channel. So how do we get uh, that point down? Well, there's this handy little grabber tool here, which it makes life easier. Click it, so it's on. Literally, all you do, go back to the number one point, hover over that same point, and if you look in here, look right here, you'll see where that blue is represented in that histogram. So in order to change it, hover over it, click and hold the mouse down, watch the values in that number one, and I can't point to it here because I've got my mouse clicked down, but watch the, see, I mean, look at the changes in that number one in the info panel. It says 146 right now, it says 130, 28. I'm just pulling the mouse up and down to have that number equal one of those two numbers, because we can adjust either one of the two. So I'm dragging down, 129, oops, 129, let's leave it there. Are we okay with the blues up here? Since we're on the blue channel, let's adjust the blue channel. So number two, which is number two over here, is nine. So we need a bit more blue in there. So we're gonna hover over number two, hold and click the mouse down, drag it up. Let's turn it to 12, okay? So we've got 12, 12, 129, 129. We're pretty close. We're a little low on the reds in number one, which is white, so we need to introduce more reds in there. So how do we do that? Go down to the curves, click red, um, make sure that that's, that's pressed down. If you do it once, it's gonna stay there. Now we wanna put more red into number one, which is the whites. Hover over, press and hold down, pull up till it says 129. 129, 129, 129. We have got equal values for the white in that image. 12, 12, and 12. We have equal values for the black. Look what they were before. 125, 29, 47. And we've made them all at 129. Doesn't really matter what it is. I mean, if you drag them higher, it's just going to get brighter, but you can, that's it. That's, you can adjust luminosity in other ways. But you want to keep them close to these values. 12, we haven't changed much in, in the darks at all. We just put a tiny bit of red in there. So if you go down to the uh, to the uh, uh, curves, go back to RGB, you can see, look at the uh, blue. It's been dragged down a little bit, and the reds have been brought up a little bit. So those are the adjustments that were made to this image to give it proper white balance. Um, if you were in um, Lightroom, you can just go automatic. But when, if I'm doing a picture, especially for something like this, I want to make sure that the white balance is is perfect and not just an automatic. Here's You can see the blue cast in there now. And when we um, um, hit the curves on the, on the adjustments, there it is. I actually think there's a little bit too much saturation in there. So I'm going to add another layer. I personally like a little less saturated, but the color temperature, in my opinion, is perfect. So I'm just going to drag the saturation down a bit. There's too much red in there. But there is a color corrected. Oh, sorry, not color corrected. A um, uh, the color color temperature. I couldn't figure it out. Think of it there for a second. The color temperature has been adjusted in curves. One of many many ways to do it. I prefer this one. It gives me the truest value, and it's actually kind of fun to play with. That's it. Have a good day, guys.